Today, I'm going to be discussing some frequently asked questions from physicians about the COVID vaccines. Now, I was talking to my 89-year-old physician father, and even though he didn't know what FAQs are, he did have several questions about the vaccines. The first question is, how do they work? Well, we have two vaccines currently available, and they both work by a novel mechanism. They both work using messenger RNA carrying the spike antigen from SARS-CoV-2, spike antigen or like the quills on a porcupine lining the virus. The messenger RNA gets taken up by local macrophages near the injection site, and then instructs the cell to make the antigen. The antigen then gets presented on the surface of the cell, and then we have an immune response as if we had encountered the virus. Then the messenger RNA is degraded and no genetic material enters the nucleus and there is definitely no live virus. It's really quite a brilliant mechanism and it's quite effective. The second question I often get is, how effective are the vaccines? In both clinical trials, the vaccines were about 95% effective in preventing symptomatic disease due to COVID-19. This is really remarkably effective and puts these vaccines up closer to where we see diseases like measles than infections like influenza. So this is great news and it's even made better by the fact that the vaccines prevented severe COVID-19 almost 100% of the time. There was only one case of severe COVID-19 in both of the clinical trials. Not only that, the vaccines appeared to work across the different populations that enrolled in the study, including the most vulnerable, such as the elderly or those with underlying comorbidities. Now, we don't know how long the vaccines will continue to work. Remember that the clinical trials only started in the summer of 2020, but this is a very encouraging start to our vaccine approach to controlling the pandemic. Now, the last question I want to cover is about the vaccine safety. How safe are they? Well, overall, uh, the vaccines were quite safe in the clinical trials. Serious adverse events did not occur more commonly in the vaccine arms than in the placebo arms. However, it should be emphasized that these vaccines do fall into that category that is known as reactogenic. And that means they are more like the recombinant zoster vaccine than some of the other vaccines we give in clinical practice. People who receive the vaccines should definitely be counseled that they are likely to have some soreness at the injection site and may even have a day or two of malaise, headache, or fever. However, most of the time, these resolve within one to two days, and they are treated readily with acetaminophen or ibuprofen or another non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Now, after these vaccines became available through the EUA and also were distributed internationally, there were reports of anaphylaxis that occurred shortly after vaccines were administered. Right now, after several million of the vaccines have been administered, we know that the incidence of this serious adverse effect is about 1 in 100,000. This means that after people receive the vaccine, they need to be observed for at least 15 minutes. People with a history of allergic disease or anaphylaxis should be observed for at least 30 minutes. Now, it's good to contextualize this. The risk of having an anaphylactic reaction from a COVID-19 vaccine is actually significantly lower than that from receiving penicillin, which is about one in 5,000 or one in 10,000. So it's our job really to contextualize these. So once again, I wanna thank you for listening. I've been talking about some frequently asked questions about COVID-19 vaccines, and this is Paul Sachs, and I'm looking forward to your reading more of our FAQs on the NEJM site.